Here begins a treatise of whom the High Father of Heaven sendeth death, to summon every creature to come and give account of their lives in this world. I pray you all give your audience and hear this matter with reverence. The summoning of every man, it is called, that our lives and ending shows how transitory we all are in truth. The story saith, Men, look well, and take good heed to the ending, be you never so gay. Ye think sin in the beginning full sweet, which in the end causes thy soul to weep. Here shall ye see how fellowship and jollity, both strength, pleasure, and beauty, will fade from thee as flower in May. For ye shall hear how our heavenly King calleth every man to a general reckoning. Give audience and hear what he doth say. I perceive here in my majesty how all the creatures are to me unkind, living without dread in worldly prosperity. Of ghostly sight the people are so blind, drowned in sin, they know me not for their God. In worldly riches is all their mind. They fear not my righteousness, the sharp rod. My law that I showed when I for them died, I hung between two, it cannot be denied. To get them life I suffered to be dead. I healed their feet, with thorns hurt was my head. I could do no more than I did truly, and now I see the people forsake me. They use the seven deadly sins damnable, as pride, covetousness, wrath and lechery now in the world be made commendable. Every man liveth so after his own pleasure, and yet of their life they know nothing sure. I see the more that I them forbear, the worse they be from year to year. All that liveth decayeth fast. Therefore I will in all haste have a reckoning of every man's person. For if I leave the people thus alone, in their life and wicked tempests, verily they will become much worse than beasts. I hope well that every man in my glory should make his mansion. But now I see like traitors deject, they thank me not for the pleasure that I to them have meant, nor yet for their being that I them have lent. I proffered the people great multitude of mercy, and few there be that asketh it heartily. They are so cumbered with worldly riches, hence on them I must do justice. Where art thou, death, thou mighty messenger? Almighty God, I am here at your will your commandment to fulfill. Go thou to every man, and show him in my name a pilgrimage he must take, which he in no wise may escape, and that he bring with him a sure reckoning, without delay or any tarrying. Lord, I will in the world go run over all, and cruelly search both great and small. Every man will I beset that liveth beastly, out of God's laws, and dreadeth not folly. He that loveth riches, I will strike with my dart, his sight to blind 
and from heaven to depart. Except that charity be his good friend. In hell he shall dwell, a world without end. <laughs> Lo, yonder I see every man walking, how little he thinketh on my coming. His mind is on fleshly lust, and his treasure, and great pain it shall cause him to endure before the Lord Heaven King. Every man, stand still. Where art thou going so gaily? Hast thou forget thy maker? Why do you ask? Would you know? Yea, sir, I will show you. I am sent to thee from God, out of his great majesty. What? Send to me? Yes, certainly. Though thou hast forgotten him here, he thinketh on thee in the heavenly sphere. What does God want of me? That I shall show thee. A reckoning he will need without any longer delay. What? To give a reckoning? I need longer time. This difficult matter troubles my wit. Thou must take a long journey. Thy book of account that I shall bring. For turn away thou cannot, by no way. And be sure of thy reckoning. For before God thou shalt answer. And show thy many bad deeds. And good but a few. How thou hast spent thy life, and in what wise, before the chief lord of paradise. Fool, unprepared am I to give such a reckoning. I know you not. What messenger are you? I am death, that all man dreadeth. For every man I rest, and no man spareth. For it is God's commandment that all to me shall be obedient. O oh, death, you came when I had you least in my mind. Of my possessions I'll give you, yes, a thousand dollars, if you made it for this matter till another day. Every man, it cannot be. I set not by gold, silver, nor riches, nor by pope, emperor, king, or princes. My custom is clean country. I give thee no respite. Come hence, and do not tarry. Alas, shall have no longer respite, for full and ready is my book of reckoning. But give me twelve years, and I'll make my accounting so clear that I may not need to fear my reckoning. Death, for the mercy of God, I pray, spare me till then. Availeth not thee to cry, weep, and pray, but haste thee on thy journey. For knoweth thou well, the tide waits for no man, and in the world each living creature must die of nature. Oh, gracious God, have mercy on me. Sh shall I then have no company or acquaintance in this journey? Yea, if any be so hardy, that would go with thee and bear thee company. And now, out of thy sight, I will hide. See that thou make thee ready. For no man living may escape his reckoning.